Welcome to Running Down the Clock, where we break down all of this week's big news, events, and controversies from the National Football League. Over the next 45 minutes, we will give you basic fan perspective and opinion on the most important stories and moments happening now. So, let's start the clock. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Running Down the Clock. I'm Tyler Walzak. I'm here with Puyo Ricey. As always, uh, we have week nine in the books. We are halfway through this season, Puyo. Yeah. I need to start with a timeout as soon as you're ready. As you might have known, I had a busy week of work. And since uh, you and I have been working much lately, I'll take anything I can get. So I didn't get to watch a lot of the football. I'll watch a little bit driving around here and there and just whenever I could on my phone. But I tried to check out all the highlights. And of course, as we know, CJ Stroud had a pretty big game this weekend. I missed that game because I haven't been a big Texans fan. So I went to watch the highlights on YouTube on the NFL's official YouTube account, where whenever I miss a game, I'll go there for the highlights. They usually got a decent highlight package. They butchered these game highlights after <laughs> in the fourth, uh, fourth quarter, the last couple of minutes, uh, buck scored to take the lead. I think the, um, it was something like, I don't know, 36 to 33 or something for the bucks. Texans come back, make a huge drive downfield. And the last thing it shows is, I think, Tank Dell getting the reception, going out of bounds with just like 10 seconds left. And then it cuts to um, it cuts to them being up 39 by like three points or something. So they scored a touchdown somehow, but it didn't show it. Up to 39 yeah. points. So they scored. Houston scored a touchdown. Didn't show it on the highlight package. There's a flag for something. And now it shows the play for the two-point conversion. You don't know what happens. And then it goes straight to they've won the game. They, they That's won the, the game highlight the, package the, that the NFL put out. So, so they the, missed like, the, the most pivotal moment. You didn't see. So, so what you're saying is that they showed Tennessee, sorry, Houston going up. Time in, time in. They showed <laughs> they showed showed Houston going up. They but they didn't no, show the no, touchdown. No. They showed the Bucks showed going the two, up. Okay, they showed the Bucks going up, but they didn't show the forty seconds. Of Houston going down the field to score. They showed them going down the field. It was probably, I'm guessing, the second to last catch by Tank Dell. It goes out of bounds to stop the clock. It showed that, but then it didn't show the touchdown play. Really? There was another little clip. I can't remember what it was. And then it was them going for a two-point conversion. And so then they... it went back to the Bucks trying to make a last play. And I think there was a, a flag or an interception and just ended the game. Wow. That's a they butchered they butchered the highlight pack. They've been getting um they've been getting in trouble actually this whole season because apparently there's been like a lot of lagging. I think is that still a cool word that people use about the internet? Uh, um, I know about it, but yeah. Yeah, like the the NFL Sunday ticket hasn't really been streaming very well on YouTube because it is a YouTube thing now. Okay. Um in the states the the um Sunday latency ticket. issues is that a word? Latency issues, that's kind of lagging, yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else the word would be. In the '90s and the early 2000s, it was lagging. Yeah, I don't know what the kids call it these days. I don't know either. Time out to start the show. Start the episode. I feel like right in the middle of it. Well, uh, yeah, hot and bothered already, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't get to see. You know, like you don't get to see the most pivotal play of the game. It was a good game. I watched that game live, um, and it was awesome. Awesome that comeback. Like you, they the highlights should have just been. The Buccaneers scoring to go ahead and then just play out the next two minutes of the game because that's the best part of the game. Oh, I, I completely agree. I, I was going back and forth thinking I missed something because the score changed without them showing you why the score changed, Yeah, which is weird. I read through the comments and apparently this is not abnormal for the NFL. I feel like they probably have some sort of AI robot putting together the highlight packages like or just a foreign theory. intern who doesn't really care. Why does he have to be foreign? <laughs> well, because if he was more American, he'd know the rules and understand the plays. This is somebody more foreign who doesn't care about the NFL. He's just doing it like whatever. I, I put together something, take it and leave it. <laughs> Maybe he's just a person that doesn't like football is doing it. He just likes splicing things together. Uh, I don't know. I think it could have <laughs> been an AI thing. Like they're just using AI to put their highlight packages together. And for some reason, that play missed something that didn't get picked up or, or the guy's just an idiot or I don't know. I don't know why. Either way, you're not happy. You've got beef. The NFL maybe didn't own the rights to that play somehow, so they couldn't show it. Maybe someone bought the rights for that specific play. Remember when they used to do that, like highlights uh, for the NBA? You could buy 
the like the digital version of an NBA highlight for like five dollars, and then the price would go up like a like Bitcoin. They tried to use it as currency. Like you could buy LeBron James game winning um, block. I have a vague memory of this, and then and you could buy cards too um, of yeah. like certain plays and certain images that like I now own this on the internet. It was right. a huge thing, and like packs would come out on like every like Thursday or something. People would try to buy as many packs as possible so they could get a certain five second clip. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe, Maybe. they're just yeah internal. Um, did you fucking buy it out for me? <laughs> Just to fuck me over? It's going to be your holiday gift. Wow. That would be such a good, make you so angry about something and then buy that clip. If someone, if anyone's listening, if you can figure out how I can buy that touchdown that by CJ Stroud to uh, Tank Dell, then I'll give it to you. I feel like CJ Stroud would have been the guy that bought, bought it. He probably Yeah, would. maybe his parents. Parents yeah. or his buddies or something or his teammates gave it to him. Not bad. Not bad. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. I feel like this is just going to turn into a conspiracy filled show. Because you're a heated. Because you're heated today. I could yeah. see you heated. You've got a lot of oh, stuff yeah. going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Let's firings? go to let's go to firings because okay. we're Raiders coach fired last year last week. Did you and you heard about the dressing room stuff that happened, right? Before you got fired? Oh, yeah, the private meetings they had. They berated yeah. into him. They said he was a shell of a man walking out. <laughs> so one guy apparently said, I don't like your face. Yeah. You I know what, though? Face. But I think at one point when things aren't going well, you have to start airing grievances, get everything off your chest as a team. You know, they say, you know, as part of the manhood, you know, you punch someone in the face, you get it out. And then, you know, everybody's cards are on the table. You know where you stand with everybody. I and- do think that that is the best way. That's why I think hockey allows fighting because you've given guys sticks and speed if they didn't fight then it's just going to be more violence sometimes yeah. the fighting just get it over with get all that shit out get it over with it takes 30 seconds everybody's happy again yeah i mean i've in my workplace i've never liked working for a boss where you can't ask questions you can't say hey do you not think this might be a better way to do things that like you can't approach them it's like they've brought you in for your expertise on a subject let's say you're the quarterback or receiver and you can't question the coaching of like why we're doing things this way. Sometimes the coaches are wrong. Sometimes the refs you're... are wrong. Sometimes players are wrong. People are always wrong, right? The I league thought... can be wrong. I thought you were going to say, I don't like working for a guy who I can't start an instant fit by this fight with this fight with at any given time. If I if I can't fight my boss, I'm not working for him. That is a, a hard and fast rule for Puya. Just uh, <laughs> if I drop the gloves at any moment in the workplace and just go at it. <laughs> um this no, is what but I, I wrote down I, I, I like that that the players have that meeting and you know what enough was enough i think yeah. uh you know the the jets have a similar situation right now where i think there's a little more obvious what the problem is but one of the guys said if you're not angry you obviously don't care enough about it and that's the same thing with the raiders situation they should be angry about what's going on yeah and they need to address it right just sitting back and hoping them something's going to change nothing's going to change well, that's exactly it. And especially as not just one player, but 53 players in that locker room that clearly don't believe in what Josh McDaniels is doing. Even the coaching staff didn't believe in what he was doing. It's like, if you just sit back now and kind of just keep doing what he says and believe in it, it's not going to work. And then you're all going to look like asses and they're never going to fire the guy. Whereas if you, I think you sit them down, sit everybody down and be like, what's going on? What the, What's the problem? Everyone says that guy's the problem. That one person is the problem. This guy's the problem. All the coaches said, Yep, Josh McDaniels is the problem. All the players said Josh McDaniels is the problem. So the owner's sitting in there and goes, okay, well, if he's the problem, he's fired. Yep, bullying works. Like, I mean, it's not the best thing in our society, but it works. I don't know if it works for Josh. It unites everybody against one person. You (laughs) scapegoat that person. You get rid of them. And then everybody's happy for a short period. I want to argue against that. I think Josh McDaniels was bullying, trying to bully the players to make them play better. And all of them stood up to the bully. No, I agree. I mean, it, it, it that was what needed to be done. Because you said uh, it, like, I think you nailed it when it's players aren't just going to play for a guy like that anymore. Like, they want to be able to say, hey, this guy is doing this every single play. I can beat him if you let me do the thing that I want to do. Like, he is doing this. They, look at him, look at him, look at him. And the coach just keeps going, no, do what I say, do what I say. That You're going to lose that player. And then if you lose all your players, you're going to lose a team, and then you're going to get fired. Yeah, I think it's just the most obvious thing is your entire team was unhappy with you. 
that's not a good sign, right? Yeah. If the entire team is unhappy with the leadership, then the leadership is ineffective. Yeah. Whether he's right or wrong, it's a divisive leadership and it doesn't work. That's really the end of the day, the, the issue. And, you know, you saw them after that other win, the, 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 the game they won there against the Giants. Mind you, it's not a great team they're playing, but look how happy everybody looked afterwards, right? Like you yeah. saw the uh, the footage from like uh, Devontae Adams playing um, basketball against smoking one of the cigars. guys in mini hoop. Then you saw them afterwards smoking cigars, enjoying themselves. They're making it fun again. They gave us a purpose to be out there. It's a yeah. better way to go about it than to just everybody hate each other, everybody be on eggshells, nobody be happy, miserable. Yeah, and like you, you want your players, even at this level where they're still getting paid all this, you want them to have fun playing the game because if they're not having fun playing the game, you're still not going to get the best from them. And it's like any just, job. If you don't like your yeah. job, you're not. Why would you put in 100 percent effort? You're going to put in the effort that takes you to get your your salary up each year or your contract fulfilled again. But unless you're having fun doing the job, then you're actually going to put some worth into it. So this is another guy from the uh, Belichick coach, uh, school have, of coaching. I feel like we should have a moment of silence for that tree. I think that tree is finally dead. The Belichick tree of coaching probably never going to get a head coaching job ever again. Yeah. Now. What about Belichick himself? There's a lot of rumors building up. And again, they're just rumors that he might not finish the season. I think we should hold our moment of silence for when Belichick gets fired. And then that's it. But there's rumors he's going to go somewhere else. Sure. Do do you think he would? Where would he go? Why would would he go? And would it? And do you think that if he did go somewhere else and he brought that Patriot way, the Bill Belichick way, do you think it would work in another dressing room where he hasn't been the guy that run the dressing room for the past 20 years, he's coming into a new team, a new way, a new I, I city. Feel, I feel for sure he'll get a job. There's definitely a team out there that will pick him up. I just think his resume is too deep for nobody to try and get him. Mm-hmm. You know, you he, think that he's, somebody... he's too big of a name to just not. Yeah. To, to go without a job if he's looking for a job. I, I don't agree. know if he'll take a break himself. I don't know where he stands on all this, right? He always he's known for just keeping his cards close, right? He's never gonna like share his emotions during the um the post game conferences, right? And yeah. especially about a topic like this, right? I could just see him maybe retiring just because you know he is getting older and he's he's been doing this for decades. Yeah, why not? He's like 75 years old. Just retire. Yeah. Plus he's been doing it since he was like 20. He's been in the NFL for something. He could go and just do like a Thursday night game. Like he and just be like not not coach it, but be like the broadcasting. Yeah. And you know what? The funny thing is he actually has a better personality when he's just talking about like the game in a way that he loves the game. Yeah. He's not talking as a coach where he's got to keep his cards close and not divulge any information and just, you know, poker face. Yeah. Whenever he talks about something that's not football, it seems like he's cheery and like yeah. Bright eyed. Cheerful guy. guy. Yeah. Pushy eyed is what they say, right? Best costume of the Halloween party kind of guy. Yeah. He's always got it. He's always got, I love that clip with Randy Moss asking him to the Halloween party. Um anyway. that so let's go let's talk about the Raiders again because I put um Rich Passaccia. And we we argued about that. Did you delete his name from this? From this nope, there we go. No nope. Rick Passaggio. Passaccia? Rick Passaccia. Rich, rich, rich Passaccia. Yeah. He was the head coach of the Raiders after John Gruden got fired and he brought them interim, to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah interim. Yeah. And they didn't give him I I don't even think they gave him a shot at the head coaching job. They brought in. No, Josh they brought McDaniels. in McDaniels. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that dressing room, that team, that specific group of guys work better when it's more of a relaxed dressing room because they got rid of they John Gruden was in there. They weren't doing great. John Gruden got fired for a bunch of other reasons, um, emails and nonsense and racism and stuff like that, I believe. Then brought in Basaccia, uh, or promoted him, I guess, from the special teams coach to or the defensive coordinator, one of those two, um, to head coach, more of a relaxed guy, let the team play, let the team play loose, bring in Josh McDaniels, hard-nosed guy, dick. Um, that's not me saying that. That's apparently everybody else saying that. And then they then Antonio Pierce takes over and says, he's a former player, played for the Giants. He, in that dressing room, when they had the thing against Josh McDaniels the Thursday before the Lions game, he was on the Giants team that beat the Patriots that was undefeated. And he said, hey, listen, sometimes you might not have the best team, but you can play up to the other team's potential if you know how to beat them. We're just going to try to get you every week to that point, and then hopefully you guys go out there, have fun, and do what we're trying to get instilled in you um, because we beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. 
And apparently Josh McDaniels also did not like that he said that. But this seems like a guy that could get the head coaching job next year. Yeah. I I, I think you got to ride him out until he proves ineffective. And so far, it seems that know. the players have taken a liking to him. Uh, I think he's trying to make a cultural change where, you know, he let the um, practice squad players onto the sidelines. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit because we, you saw that. I saw that the, apparently the Raiders practice players weren't allowed on the sideline. I did some research on this. That's fucked up because every other team's um, players, like practice players are on the sidelines. Like the Packers players are on the sidelines. Um, The Indianapolis Colts players are on the sidelines. Every and the Miami Dolphins player practice players are all on the sidelines. So it's so weird that he didn't allow those players on the sidelines. Yeah, it's one thing if it's just a cultural thing within them that you know what they don't really care, they don't want to be there. But to fact the fact of not allowing them, why not give these guys a first hand glimpse of the game? All that does is gets them more hungry to get into the game. Sitting there on the sidelines watching, it actually you know it ignites a fire inside of them to maybe work a little harder to get there. Well, not only that, but when they get their shot, like when they do, when an injury happens or yeah. someone trades away a player and they get promoted to the team, they're all already been, they've already been on the sidelines. They already understand how the play calling works, how the game works, where they should be standing. Um, if they want to get into the game, like when their team has the ball or, or if they're on defense, like that, like just nuances like that, they're going to be I, well ahead of I the, agree. The I can't process. think of a reason of why not to have them there other than the fact of is there a minor additional cost that they don't want to pay for having them there? I think maybe just McDaniels was probably, and again, this is just me guessing him saying you have to earn it to be on the sideline. You can't just be on a practice team. Like you gotta, you have to be, Yeah, no, I can see that, which is also bullshit. Like the guys are out there playing practice with like, they're on the team. They're just not good enough to be on the team, but they're still helping the team in every way they can. 100%. Yeah. You got trainers, you got water boys. You guys, got, there's a just... hundred thousand. You have friends of friends on out there. Yeah. Like you got a lot of people on the sidelines who haven't earned it. They're just part of the team. They're doing yeah. their small role to make the team, you know, do well. Yeah. Everybody has a role. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, that's a, it's an odd cultural thing, right? Makes everybody kind of against each other. I, 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 I think this, I don't like it. I think this helps the Raiders a lot this year. I think they're going to the Super Bowl now, no? Uh, I was going to say, it's kind of funny that your <laughs> non team team is the Raiders. My non team team is apparently the Chargers now. Same 100%. division. When do they play each other next? Oh, it's coming up. Is it soon? It's not this week. This week, the Raiders play the Giants. Nope. Sorry. That was last week. Yeah. I think it's this week. No, well. the Lions play the Chargers on, on, uh, on Sunday uh, afternoon this week. So it's not that game. But the Raiders, the Raiders have the Jets in prime time. What a brutal prime time game to have. Um, they got, let's see, Chargers week 14. Nope. December 14th. So the end of the week. Week 15, December yeah. 14th. That is a 5 15 p.m. That's a Thursday night game. You know what, though? They usually play near the end of the season, if I memory serves correct. They played already earlier this year because they played twice. Yeah, well, they played twice, yeah. But there's usually a game at the end of the season. Yeah. Um no, I think this is good for the uh, Raiders moving forward. The Four big question five. is who's going to be the QB? It's weird that they I I'm I don't know why they went with Aiden O'Connell. Um I guess Jimmy G just isn't the guy in the dressing room or he's just they needed to shake something up. I don't know about Jimmy G. I think his lack of consistency can be just too much of a problem for for some teams, you know. Well, if you got a great coach. team where you can give something up every now and then, sure, it's fine. But when it's a team just trying to kind of build an identity, kind of get the ball rolling, it's tough when your guys, your quarterback's inconsistent at random times. Like if you know his weaknesses and you just kind of play to understanding a player's weaknesses, yeah, you can kind of adjust your game plan of like knowing, well, he's not good at this. He's not good at that. Let's adjust. And you can kind of account for the, the um the setbacks. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see because this correct me if you think differently, but them winning this game against the Giants, one, the Giants are a bad team. Um, but two, is it's probably from that high of firing a coach that nobody liked. Um, the mentality changing in the dressing room and just going out there and playing football. Now, every game from now on, it's gonna come down to like 
the, is the system still working though? Because you can't just go out every game with that momentum of, of someone no, finally I, leaving a dressing room. You know, so much of life is timing. This was just a timing thing where there was a change and they had perhaps one of the weakest teams to play against on the schedule. Yeah. So but it was just, just a good chance to ride that high and win, get a little momentum. Now, you know, it's only going to get harder, right? It's like teams are going to be fighting for those playoff spots. Yeah. It's not going to get any easier. But having said that, you still needed that change to occur. You know, sometimes things got to get worse before they get better. Yeah. They needed that change to occur for the team to move on and start finding a new identity. Do you think they beat the the Jets? They play the Jets on Sunday night. Again, that's another winnable game. Yeah, I think they can 100% beat the Jets. I think so too. I, I think mean, it'll the, be a tighter game than, you know, than the Giants. They're not going to blow them out of the water, but I also think they have a if Aiden O'Connell is the starting quarterback in that game, I think he's the better starting quarterback. Zach Wilson's kind of garbage. Like we know he's been garbage, but wow, that was a bad game on uh, the other night. Monday night was it? The Chargers Jets, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't good at all. And because he's not good, they can't run the ball. Because everyone knows they're going to run the ball because they can't throw the fucking thing. No, he's... Stinks. He, he needed, stinks. he needed Aaron Rodgers more than anybody did. Oh, yeah. For, he for needed that. Sure. Take the pressure off him. Learn. Adjust. Grow. Dude, it's... why didn't they go get Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz is signed with the Rams now. Yeah. Why Why wouldn't the Jets go out and get Carson Wentz? I, I don't know. They have I, just, to I feel like he, anybody would have been better. Just for the psychology of it, you know, the players all obviously want to change. Yeah. Everybody's aware he's not the guy yet, right? Right now, and he just needs development, or he'll never be the guy. Either way, it doesn't matter. I think he'll never be the guy at this point. It doesn't matter. The fact is, everybody else on the team just knows we need to change. Yeah, every team you play against knows they need to change. Well, even the head coach uh, Robert Sala, the press conference he had either last night or this morning, someone said like. Are you what? What's going on? Why are you still playing the Zach Wilson at quarterback? And I think his response was, uh, "You got me. I I plead." Trevor the fifth. Simeon. He wants to plead the fifth. Yeah, was, why? Why haven't you put Trevor Simeon in? Why haven't we seen him out there? Give him a try. And he's like, "I'm going to plead the fifth on that." Yeah, he's got to be coming in. I, I assume. Well, if it's not the Raiders game, the week after that, we see Trevor Simeon playing quarterback. Yeah, it's... if not Aaron Rodgers, guys out there throwing 58 yard footballs before the game. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't. What think else do you have to lose? Hurt. I what? don't think that Aaron Rodgers is hurt. I think he faked his injury severity, the severity of his injury. It probably not a full torn ACL, probably just a little slice of it got uh, cut off, partially separated maybe, and he's coming back before the playoffs start, just so that he can get a little bit of a rest and go stronger without injury into the actual meaningful part of the season. My only flaw with that, it's a risky game because you need, a quarterback they to still, get you there, yeah. you need a quarterback to get you there. Like so far, they got one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Period. I mean, this was a bad week for quarterbacks too. Listen to some of these matchups we just had. Daniel Jones versus Aiden O'Connell. Uh, it ended up being Josh Dobbs versus Taylor Heineke. It started off with Jaron Hall versus Taylor Heineke. We'll get that, into the Josh that Dobbs. That one ruined my week. Because that was, week. yeah. Clayton Toon versus PJ Walker. Sam Howell versus Mac Jones, which inherently like those guys still can put it together in, in the terms of a career, um, but they're not exciting quarterbacks. Tyson Badgett versus Derek Carr uh, ended up being a good quarterback duel. Uh, Will Levis versus Kenny Pickett, which I think these guys also pick it up later on the year. But I think like, Will Levis could be a great quarterback. I think Will. He's, I'm. You know, I the, think Will Levis yeah. is going to be very good. There's no, there's no reason good. to count him out yet, right? Or four is... touchdowns in his first. He's only started two games. Scored four touchdowns yeah. in his first game. I think, but just those, like you, at the beginning of the season, there's no way you could tell me that you you could guess those matchups in week nine. No, no I, 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 I didn't, I didn't know most of these players in week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about Josh Dobbs because that was awesome. That was awesome. I'm, I know we're not allowed to talk about our fantasy teams, but I specifically picked him up this week. You're allowed to talk about it. Just no one will care. No, yeah, but I know I don't. Nobody already cares about what I got to say. You know, I don't want to add to that. <laughs> um, I picked him up because I liked him. I, you know, I think he's a good kid. I think he's, you know, he's got the right potential to be a good player, good yeah. quarterback in the NFL. So I picked him up specifically because I don't have a quarterback anyway, right? I, right. Okay. Uh, don't know that because I don't care. But yeah, yeah. go. 
And but the report was he's not starting, which he wasn't. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll play him next week, right? Like I'm not going to put him in if he's not starting. That's just a stupid move. Even though I had faith in him. <laughs> and then of course he comes in the game, lights it up. Yeah. Jaron Hall gets injured, concussion, I think. And we was going five for six, 78 yards, comes in and gets hurt. Um, bring in Josh Dobbs, runs for 66 yards and a touchdown, throws for a 20 for 30, 150 yards, two passing touchdowns. They he didn't know the plays. So he would call the plays. The coach would be like, Hey, this is the play, say it to the group. And then the your helmet, um, Speakers, yeah. Speakers, Jesus. Your helmet speakers, they last until the 15 seconds left on the play clock. So the Collins, um, what is the name of the uh, – Kevin O'Connell, uh, the head coach for the Vikings, would be like, call this play, let everybody know what's going on. And then be like, okay, the guy on your right, very far away from you, he's running like a seven-yard out. The guy on your left that's also way on the other side, he's doing like a post. Those are your two guys, find one of them or like run the ball. And then it would cut out. That's how he was playing. He didn't know that he didn't know what to do. He didn't know the names of the players that were on the field with him. Just oh, a little bit of information. There, yeah. Got, won the game. Yeah. Won the game. Yeah. Crazy. Did you see them celebrate him after too? It was awesome. Oh yeah. I've become a big Josh Dobbs fan. This is like the fourth time we've talked about him this year. I liked him when he was with Arizona and he was trying to buy his jersey in the store and they didn't have it. That was amazing. <laughs> at the, the, the team store, not the just like a, like a champ yeah. sports or something. He was at the team store and they didn't the have it. Team store in the fucking, like their, their stadium and they didn't have it. <laughs> Couldn't even buy it. Like there's a button, like a monitor where you could choose yeah. the players and the starting quarterback wasn't on there. That's ridiculous. I hope he balls out with Minnesota because we all know Kirk Cousins stinks and Minnesota Vikings, this is scary for the Lions. They might actually have a quarterback right now to help them get through this season. And Justin Jefferson, as of an hour and a half ago, when we recorded this on Tuesday, um, or sorry, Wednesday, he will be, uh, he's back back at practice, I guess. Or allowed to practice again. He'll be back very soon. Right. So two weeks, he could we could see him on the field. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. that's a good receiving team they got up there in Minnesota. Well, now that they finally got a guy that can throw the ball to him. Because oh, yeah. Kirk, save me Jesus Cousins, wasn't getting it done, winning games. He was his statistics personally weren't too bad, but he wasn't winning games for them. You know what though? He was a five hundred by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and anyway. the Vikings make the playoffs? You think they can? Yeah, I don't see why they can't. They're they're in a position where they could make the playoffs. Yes. Here's the here's the NFC right it's now. Not going to be easy. Eagles are uh, NFC East, number one. Then you got the Lions, NFC North, number one. Saints, uh, NFC South, number one. 49ers, um, number one. Not just Seahawks are tied, though. But that means that, yeah, but this is what what the playoffs would look like. One seed Eagles, two Lions, three 49ers, four Saints. Then the wild card would go Seahawks, Cowboys, Vikings. There you go. So right now they're in a playoff spot. God damn. Yeah, I think they. I think they'll probably make the playoffs. Wow, are they? They're, because of the bye week, they're one game behind uh, the Lions, aren't they? They are one game behind the Lions. Yeah, because of the bye week, the Lions would have to lose two to get to where they are. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's not bad. Are any of these teams surprise you from the beginning of the year? Eagles, Lions, 49ers, Saints, Seahawks, Cowboys, Vikings in the currently in the playoffs. Do any of them surprise you from what we talked about at the beginning of this year? Not at all. Not, that, not at all. Yeah, I. I mean, I thought the Buccaneers would be no, better. No, we didn't. We didn't start the season thinking the Buccaneers would be better. It's only because the first few games Baker Mayfield was winning. I think he won the first two or three. I think he was three and zero, oh, and so we thought, oh, this they, they might actually have it together. But they've lost every game since. I think the Giants have probably been the most disappointing team. No, two I, and seven made the playoffs last year. Now they're two and seven. I think we both agreed though, like. Daniel Jones was he overperformed last year. I don't think he had it. I think he can he doesn't have an offensive line. He's got no receivers. He is getting sacked every play. But every play. Do you think uh they fire the coach Dayball after this year? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, possibly, I haven't really kept yeah. I, I yeah. haven't kept up. I'll be honest with you. I haven't kept up with them. There's nothing, there's nothing of interest over there to to review. That's what I mean, is that they made the playoffs last year. If you don't make it this year, I think he's gonna get Yeah, fired. but they played a lot better last year. Well, that's how you make the playoffs. You play better. That's how you make the playoffs. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, let's go with the AFC real quick. Chiefs, 
number one, Ravens two, Jaguars three, Dolphins four, wild card spot currently. This is insane. Steelers, Browns, Bengals. All four of the uh, AFC North teams are in the playoffs as of right now. The division's all above 500. So good. And then you got the Bills that aren't in the playoffs at five and four. And then you've got three, four, and four teams. The Texans, Chargers, Chargers, Jets. The this is an exciting second half for the AFC. Can we talk about the Bills for a sec? Yeah, 100%. That's probably the most disapp- disappointing team of the year. So, we also called it at the beginning of the year. Yeah. But you know what, though? Miami's not looking like a threat in the playoffs. No, they haven't beat any teams that are above 500. They, you know, they, they look like imposters so far yeah. this year. Yeah, um, frauds, but the sure. Bills, the Bills seem like they're getting worse. And it, somebody brought up a good point that I saw. I can't remember who it was. Um, their coach isn't the right guy for the job. He's a coach to clean up a good situation, but he's not a coach to like be creative and elevate teams to the next level. He's a coach that his game plans will get figured out. Yeah. And like, why did that, does that team never run the ball? I don't know why they don't run the ball. They don't, don't run the they, ball. They also stopped Josh Allen from running the ball, which is that's why his one of the. Well, his I think things. it's because they're worried about injuries for him, right? Like, obviously, yeah, but they still, yeah. what's the, you're losing games. At some point, you're going to have to do things that might cause an injury, but are better for the team in the long run. Yeah. It seems like the team's regressing. They don't seem like a threat as much as they used to be, right? They yeah. were what, one coin flip away from being in the Super Bowl? Yep. Now they're not even they're now they're fighting for playoffs. Yeah, it's pretty sad to see. And the Bengals, we thought they at the beginning of the year, we they were own three, I think. They won five straight in a row now. Yeah. They or own two, I don't know sure. But they uh they well, they're own three. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Good. I was right. Yeah, they no, they won four in a row right now. So they're one and three. Were they? Okay. Yeah. So own two and then one and two and then one and three. I believe, I don't know. Um, doesn't matter. But that I thought that team was going to be, it was either the Bills that were going to sink or the Bengals that were going to sink and the other one would float. And Bengals are probably, they're they're looking scary now. They look very good. I think the Steelers make the playoffs. Steelers are, I don't see how they're winning games. Have you watched them play? Yeah, it's bad. Football. I don't see how they're winning games. Yeah. And Kenny Pickett was hurt too, I think, this past weekend. Yeah. One of their big receivers, you know, the big catch, um, George Pickens, didn't he have the worst game of his career or something? Yeah, apparently he's he's like screaming at the team as well too, like not not behaving what? very. He wasn't celebrating when the team scored. He'd walk away from the field like he yeah. was. He looked like he doesn't want to be there. He hates the team, and you know yeah. maybe he just hates the offensive coordinator, like a lot of people in that city do right now. But everybody in the world seems to hate him. Yeah, it's not a good. Antonio Brown spoke out against him. Wow. Oh. I don't even know if he remembers who he is, Antonio <laughs> Brown. Also, Deontay Johnson finally scored a touchdown for the Steelers. Uh, he didn't have any last year. No. Most red zone attempts or targets, zero catches in, in touchdowns. Jaguars are probably going to be uh, uh, winning every single game from here on out. This AFC, like the NFC is wrapped up, I think. I think we all know those seven teams we mentioned earlier, um, Eagles, Lions, 49ers, Saints, Seahawks, Cowboys, and Vikings. Those are going to be the playoff teams in the NFC. I don't think the Commanders take a spot. No. I don't think the Falcons take a spot. Buccaneers no. aren't going to take a spot. I think so. That's sewn up. I think Chiefs guaranteed, Ravens guaranteed, Jaguars guaranteed. I think for sure in the playoffs. I'm not sold on the Dolphins yet uh, because the Bills could take that spot. And also the Jets could take that spot if they get better quarterback play. I mean, the Texans, they're the Jets 4 ain't 4. Taking the the spot. Texans, who's, who's going to, until Aaron Rodgers steps in there, nothing's changing. Nothing's well, changing. If they go ten and f- ten, uh, if they go seven and five, seven and six, and then then if they're a game above five hundred when Aaron Rodgers comes back, I think they can still win the playoffs. I think he comes back too late. Well, we don't know. We we don't know because I don't believe that he's actually hurt. Right. So he'll just take a perfect moment to do it. Okay. That's what I'm telling. There's gonna be a lot of conspiracies on this show. Um, but like I said, Steelers, Browns, Bengals, all of them could be switched out with the Chargers are four and four. Like they're a game behind out of the playoffs. Yeah, that's one team I could see actually getting hot. And because yeah. like you said last week, their record doesn't show uh doesn't indicate how good of a team they actually are. Yeah, they're getting a little banged up on the offensive side of a couple wide receivers gone down, uh Joshua Palmer and uh, Mike Williams, but they their coach is on a hot seat, so I guarantee every week 
the owner is saying, lose this fucking game, you're gone. Lose this next game, you're gone. So he'll probably start being a little less um, Bruce Staley and a little more just trusting the guys on the I think field. It's Brandon, but anyway. Brandon Staley, yeah. Call him Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Staley. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, should we talk about fines real quick and then we'll do some midseason? Uh, you mid-season want to get into reports? a conspiracy? Why don't you get into a conspiracy? Okay, I do have a conspiracy. I'm excited about this one because we were just going to talk about fines and how the the Ravens fullback got a fine for a block. Um, the Chargers or who was the other Eagles, fullback before? Eagles, Eagles running back DeAndre Swift. Don DeAndre Swift. He unnecessary roughness for dropping his head when he was running the ball. When he was running the ball, just getting lower for leverage, got him like a ten thousand dollar penalty. But even last week and the week before, there was guys that were just blocking, either blocking a little too high or a little too low. Not egregious, not at the knees, not at the head, just a little bit above, let's say the chest or a little below the chest that were getting fined. Their full game checks. Yeah. There was a rookie. And, I forget who it was. He yeah, lost his whole game was check. Too. Lost his whole game check. And I think the conspiracy here is the NFL is over finding these guys and making the game less violent because of CTE, because of all the awareness that we've had over the last 10 years about injuries and protecting the players. Um, and the game's just not going to be as tough as it used to be a decade ago. I think they're going to overfine these players. They're going to cause such a problem with fans being like, football's not football anymore. Nobody's hitting each other. No one's doing this. Like, it's just, it's not watchable. You might as well play flag football. So the NFL can go in three years, whenever they have the next bargaining agreement or whatever they do, be like, we're going back to the old way. We're going back to old football. We're not finding people. Allowed to hit wherever you want. Heads can go down. We're jumping on people. Like, let's get out there. Let's be violent again because nobody likes this product. You guys don't like getting fined. The players don't like getting fined for this stuff. Nobody's watching anymore as much as they were like and happy about it. At least we're getting so much flack about this soft NFL that we now they have an excuse, an excuse to go back to the violent football of the nineties. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. I've got a counterpoint though. I think the NFL is trying to push a flag football league. Why? Maybe. Why? Like with these guys, like just get rid of hitting altogether? Maybe not necessarily for the NFL, but I think they want to like introduce a nationwide flag football league that they will run. And like they're trying to promote it for the Olympics, right? Yeah. But what? So you're going to ruin your product so that you can promote the Olympics? I don't know if they're trying to ruin their product. They might. They be are. Doing, no, no. What you're doing as well. I think they're trying to get people more comfortable with the idea of flag football. They're going to introduce a separate league. It's not going to turn the NFL into a flag football league. They're just going to have another product of theirs for flag football. And if it does better somehow in the future, and people are getting a lot softer and more pamby bamby, whatever, like pansies kind of way, they'll have another product for them for other like kids to grow up into playing. They're going to have this. They're going to introduce it to the like youth. The, I don't like this take. I think I don't like soft. it either. I think I you're soft for bringing it up. I don't like it either. But why you else ruin would they football? Be, you why would they else have ruined football? Why else would they be promoting My thing. their players to go play in the Olympics? They're not promoting football. their players to play in the Olympics. They did. They did. They encouraged it. Well, yeah, you want your players in the in the Olympics because it just brought the, it broadens the sport. The players into exactly more of a it broadens thing. the sport for them to own. The fl- the National Flag Football League and ruin too. the NFL league. No, it'd be a different game. It'd be a different game for different fans. But they'd be growing a new sport. They so wait, they're creating a new product. Would they be able to then say the NFL is going back to the old product? Sure, they could still do that. Yeah, so still do my thing. They can still do your thing. It doesn't negate your thing. They just include your thing. They just want to have another product out there. So they're going to do the soft thing that I said to then get an NFL flag football league for people that don't like the hitting to yeah. watch. To, they can pivot to that. And then the, the truth, like the the real fans, yeah, like me, not you, like me, not you, will watch the real NFL. You'll watch the flag football. You watch that. And then I'll watch the NFL. It's hard though because I'm gonna have to cancel. I mean, I have to cancel my ultimate frisbee uh, subscription so I can watch the flag football league. You know, is ultimate frisbee tackle? No, it's. Oh yeah, you just have. It's you not, can't take it's not even steps, touch. Right? Yeah, you're not supposed to touch anybody. 
No, you can't even run with the 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 thing, the frisbee. Yeah, you gotta like, take two steps when you catch it or something like that. Yeah, you gotta come to a stop. Is you gotta gather step stop is what you gotta do. It's When's the last terrible. time you've thrown a frisbee? Uh frisbee golf would have been the last time. And I'm not good at throwing a frisbee. Have you played frisbee? Like, do you often play frisbee golf? Not often. I've played is maybe fun? Three, three times. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a beer game. You know, you, you yeah. get grab a couple beers with some boys and just go out and play. It's like free too, right? Yeah. A lot of parks here, they just have the thing set up and you just go. You just got to buy you, the Frisbee. Where Queen Elizabeth Park, close to you. Where did you get the Frisbee, though? Uh, well, I was at a bachelor party this uh, past summer, and they just Your had bachelor it. party played flag for... We had this kind of party mansion kind of thing where they had all sorts of different games. They you had played outdoor soccer. And... Yeah, yeah we, well, we didn't play flag football. We played soccer. We Soft had, stuff. like, billiards, outdoor giant billiards with soccer balls. There was um, the Frisbee golf. There was pool tables. There was... Um, what do you call it? foosball? There was arcade games. There was a whole bunch of stuff. Croquet. There was, you know, just not, beer games. Not one contact sport. Well, the soccer gets pretty physical once the lights uh, get started. say that, just... that soccer billiards game probably be a little get a little more physical as the game goes on, the night goes on. No, no. The actual like outdoor soccer because it started to get dark. Now nobody can see. So you're just like drunk, barefoot, sliding on grass, crashing into each other. There was a few yeah. injuries, but no, we didn't play tackle football. Yeah. I, I get nervous when I see people at the beach playing tackle football. Like, I need to pull a hammy and not be able to go to work. Leave you know what? The, the, the only NFL. thing about the beach, when you play the beach, is the sand makes it so you Slows can't down. run fast enough. Yeah. You can't run fast enough to pull a hamstring. Yeah. I Everybody's like, kind of like, like slow. Full contact football, like in like, like thigh height water, like thigh height in the ocean. Yeah. That's, you know, it, it it's hard to play that way just because everybody's so much slower. Yeah, well, that makes it more fun. Yeah, because you get your knees up high, you can get through that water a little quicker. You yeah, never know step. where the rocks are, though. There's always a rock line that you run into, and somebody takes out their entire shin. You got a high step like Deion Sanders. That's the oh, yeah. way to play. Oh yeah. Hey, would you want to see Deion Sanders coach football in the NFL? I wouldn't mind it. I, I think don't better think suited he's for college. Gonna, I don't think he's going to be there for a few years, though. He seems like he's very part of the gradual progression of things. Yeah. I, so I don't too. think he just wants to. I, he, I feel like if he wanted to be in the NFL, he could start putting his name out there and get some interviews and stuff. I don't think he really wants to do it right now, but I think it might be in his like five or ten year plan. But I think yeah. until his his boys leave football in college, like his kids, then I don't think he's going anywhere. I think, he's, co- I think he's better for mentoring kids coming into football than he is. That's also that's that's also what adults. he's always stated. Like he yeah. he cares about the kids from like you know like making adults out of them making responsible uh, pe- uh members of society out of them right yeah we need more guys like Deion sanders in like college football where where do you think his uh coaching stock is currently coaching stock i bet you a team will interview him just to interview him or ask to interview him just to get that headline right that's what i think that's as far as i think it but goes. he might turn that down he might just say I'm not he'll for sure turn it down i think there's too much at colorado for why i don't know why he would leave right now his son's going back for another year. Like both Shadur and Shiloh, I think, are going back for another year in Colorado. He's not in the headlines every week, though. The buzz, the buzz has kind of died down. Yeah, the team got They're worse. Winning. No, the team got worse. Yeah. That's not good for anybody there, honestly. No. Um, okay, one more thing. And then let's just do some like MVP who you have as your MVP for the first half of the season. If you have a like anything, what just give us a take on the first half of the season. And then we'll go to the games that's coming up this week. A take on the first half of the season. I think a lot of it's playing out the way everyone thought. But I I mentioned this last week. The Chiefs are an amazing team. That duo of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, that is a generational talent. Like For the fact of they are like the Patriots of before, the Belichick Brady. Obviously, they haven't had as much success yet, but fuck me, they're look at the Chiefs. They just somehow win. They they do. And, and Denver, you know who of... Denver is? Denver is their Miami. Denver you know how like the Patriots Denver. would just lose once in a while randomly, even though they oh, beat yeah. everybody in the league, and they yeah. just lose a random game to Miami. Yeah, <laughs> that's Denver. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good take. I like that take. That that, that they're Denver is just this team that they're way better than. Just once in a while, though. They'll just lose a very winnable game against Denver. That's going to be the rest of their. That is a very good take because Patriots used to do that all the time. Oh, yeah. all the time. 
They don't play the Chiefs again this year, though. I don't think. No, they don't. They played the Tweet Chiefs already. Twice. Yeah, they played. Twice. Um, split the split the season. Come I on. think my first half, whatever, Lamar Jackson's MVP candidate again, probably leading MVP candidate. Is he though? He had one t- uh, one throwing touchdown last week. Doesn't matter. Winning and he games. Had a fumble. Doesn't matter. Winning games. Sure. You win games. Your team wins games. You were the quarterback. MVP. Baltimore Ravens are going to the Super Bowl off of Lamar Jackson's play. I I I would not be upset seeing Lamar Jackson win a Super Bowl. I would love to see it. I think he's probably the one player, other than anyone on the Lions, the one player I'm rooting for the most to win a Super Bowl would probably be Lamar Jackson. So there's a game we didn't talk about. That was a pretty big game. It was a good, good game. It was the Eagles Cowboys last week? That was yeah. our game of the week. Yeah. And what was your take on that game? Because I got a little point to make about our boy who we shit on all the time, Dak Prescott. I think that uh, Dak made some mistakes. Stepping out of bounds was a big one. Yeah, that was a bad one. Um, but it, I, like that's the thing I remember most. Like, hey, they played. He played great. Both it seemed played to me. Good. I don't know. Does he have an injury or something? It seemed like his arm was so weak that game. He couldn't, for the life of him, he couldn't get the ball to travel the right distance. That's what yeah. it seemed like to me. I yeah, I, I didn't really pay attention to that too too much. I can't I can't say I can comment on that. I know th- I thought the same thing about Tua Tua Tungavaiola, who's always everyone's always said he's got a weak arm, but he like yeah, he threw a couple threw a wobble arms that yeah. just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, but no, I didn't see that about Dak. I'll check that out when they play uh, this week. Who do they got this week? They got the um, they're not a, they're not a bye week, are they? Nope. Cowboys playing the Giants this week, so he'll fucking five touchdowns. Yeah. The other thing I'm starting to accept is I don't think Dak's going anywhere. I think they're going to ride out his career. Like Tony Romo. They yeah. do that. Tony Romo was never a guy that's going to win the, in the playoffs for them. Dak will never be a guy that wins in the playoffs for them. No. But no. I, I think we could see the Eagles against the uh, the Chiefs again. One team for the rest of the season that surprises you in terms of good fighting for playoffs and then one team that just drops off the face of the earth. Go. Top of your head. Seattle. Seattle, uh, we had no faith in them. Somehow they're still in the mix. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the 49ers on the other, the flip side. 49ers so The Seahawks be... are in a playoff spot now. You think they they do you they think they win the division or do you think they just win a wild card? Uh, I think they take the wild card. I think they take second in that division. Okay. And then um, the other thing you're about to say. Well, the 49ers, I think that it's going to be tight between them and the Seahawks. When the 49ers on paper. You think I they think fall they get or you think they go back up? I think they just narrowly beat the Seahawks for the for the division. Okay. Those, uh, those, but those are weak. The predictions. 49ers, the 49ers should be on paper on par or maybe even better than the Eagles this year. They should be better. Well, they don't have a quarterback. No, but they are they they were they haven't had a quarterback in a while and they were still riding high. No, they definitely don't have a quarterback. They do not. I don't know. I still have some faith in Brock Purdy that he can turn things around and get back to the winning ways. He's got Debo Samuel back. He's got his team back. He's, okay. he's got his team that when he was winning, and according to you, not doing anything, just letting the skill players do everything, he's got that team back again. So why yeah. shouldn't he go back to that? He should. I mean, Debo's back, so he should go back to that. Let's yeah. hope for no more injuries for them because they are an exciting team to watch. So I think the Browns at 5-3, and three, I think they drop off the face of the earth. Sure. So I, I don't think they make the playoffs, and I think they win maybe two more games. And then I think... Not the Falcons. I think the Falcons head coach gets fired. They just don't play Bijan Robinson at all. It's very strange. Um, let's go. Let's uh, that actual division. I think that whole division falls off the face of the fucking earth. <laughs> yeah. Well, you need one team to make it. The Saints probably. Yeah. Uh then I'm gonna go. Let's say a team that could come up still. Then let's go with the. Uh, let's go with Chargers. I think the Chargers win out most of their games. Yeah. Can I tell you uh, a team within two years I think is going to be a really good team? Because the Texans. Yeah, CJ starts amazing. I'd be it'd be awesome if they made the playoffs this year. That'd be wicked. But Jacksonville's going to get there. The same I division. think so. Well, but because not. Texans would be awesome. I would love to see the Texans do well. I like CJ Stroud a lot. I did not think I'd like him. I like him a lot. Yeah, he's exciting. But also, the rest of the players around him are stepping up too. Yeah. That's Tank one thing Dow, we talk about. The difference between him Collins. and um, Bryce Young. Whatever Bryce Young is doing, nobody around him is stepping up either, right? Yeah. yeah. It's Whereas just Bryce for CJ Young. Stroud, 
the whole team seems to be stepping it up and actually performing well. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Rookie of the year. Definitely. Like rookie that, of the that, year. that, uh, pitch pass from, uh, what was it? The, uh, the, the running back for his name, the little, little pitch back to uh CJ Stroud, like yeah, little trick plays like that. that for a young team to be executing. Well, they're exciting. Like they're good. They're a good team to watch too. Which brings us into this week's games. Bengals play the Texans in Cincinnati. Bengals are seven point favorites. I don't think that's fair. I think Texans, I think Texans cover the spread. If not, win a game. Don't go against Vegas these days. No, Vegas is killing people this like not like like they're well, they're winning every single bet. They're destroying here's, everybody. Here, here's a theory. I don't know if we touched on a conspiracy theory about Vegas. They had that um data breach or whatever, right? The hacking right. Uh, situation this year. They lost a lot of money. They got to get it back. They're making it back. They are making ah, it back. That's a good conspiracy. I'm surprised we didn't bring that one up a little bit earlier. Yeah, well, that's... That's why they're making all those phone calls. That's the why they're quarters. making... Yeah, they're they're making sure that they make all the money they lost. And they don't just make money back. They make a profit back, right? Oh, yeah. That's the whole game plan. It's not so. about just getting even there. So, you, so don't bet against Vegas for this year. Okay. Okay. That's that's yeah. I like that. Uh, what are your game? What's your game of the week here? The game of the week. So I got two games of the week actually, but okay for different reasons. I got the bad team game of the week. Okay, I saw that. I think, you wrote this down here. I like this. Yeah. I like that you so did this. I got the Jets and Raiders as the bad team game of the week. Agreed. The Raiders. Raiders riding a high from last week against yep. playing another winnable game. So they can extend that, you know, this this elated feeling of like, hey, we're actually making a difference. We're doing well. Yep. And the Jets, I think they've hit a point where there's going to be a change in the immediate future here. I think Trevor Simeon comes in halfway through this game. I think something changes. And that could be the spark to ignite the rest of the team to just say, finally, right? Like they saw what the Raiders did of like, we need a change. We need a big change. It's not fucking working, yeah. right? We're we've getting we're getting lucky in the games we've won. Defense can't carry your team forever if your offense does nothing. Your offense can do a little bit, and defenses can help carry you, supplement things. But your defense, you can't rely on a defense to win you every single game for an entire season. No, no. And that brings so, us to the. I think, I think that could actually be a tighter game, and they both have a lot of weaknesses where the yeah. other team could expose. I agree, and you're a good game team in the good team good game, game in the week. yeah. Is GTGOTW. Yeah. The Lions and the Chargers. And, you know, there would have been a long time okay. where people would say, uh, oh, just because, you know, this is a Lions favorite broadcast that we're going to take the Lions as the game of the week every week. But they're a legit good team now. Like yeah. they are a, a favorite to do well in the playoffs now. So, like, they're not just, just, you know, like our team to pick them. And the Chargers, like you said, they are a make or break team where, their coach could lo- go be gone at any moment if they just have an implosion yeah. and a disastrous week, coaching mistakes. He could be gone. Yeah, and they're an exciting team. Like they, they are. An they have off. They have skilled team. offensive players. Yeah. Eckler, uh, Allen. This game should have been flexed into because the Raiders Jets is Sunday night. This game is at one o five p.m. Um, our well, time Pacific time. So they should have put this Chargers Lions game Sunday night. Instead of having it at 4 p.m. The Monday game's Bills Broncos. Oh. Well. That game sucks too. Yeah. The Raiders Jets game on Sunday night should be at four o'clock East Coast time, one o'clock here, or the Lions Chargers game, which is one o'clock here. That should be prime time, 520. What would you rather watch? A lion fighting a lightning bolt or a horse fighting a buffalo? Oh, but uh, a <laughs> lion fighting a lightning bolt was gonna be pretty very like very quick like speed of light over i'm I'm thinking more of a greek mythology thing like the lion's got a sword and a shield kind of thing you know <laughs> so stupid. i got my money on the line yeah um okay so then i like those games of the week there's one more i think we should talk about ravens browns that is they're both five and three i think no 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 uh the the ravens have a better uh record than that oh yeah sorry ravens seven two Browns five and three. I think it's I was thinking about everyone else in that division. Yeah. Um is five and three. But this is a this is a big game for the Browns. Yeah. Prove their worth in that division. 
the Ravens, there's been a couple weeks where they've kind of come out as duds. Yeah. I'm hoping they're over that. And who like who's the quarterback coming out for uh the Browns PJ, this week? I think it's PJ Walker PJ or Deshaun Walker. Watson. We have, we never know anymore. No. They keep I saying Deshaun, doing, but then PJ. I think plays. you're doing just as well with either one. I don't think Deshaun Watson's a difference maker right now. Well, you said the Jets can't keep winning based on defense. Neither that's why I picked the Browns to just like drop off the face of the earth because they're only yeah. winning because of their defense. And I think that you can't, you're right, you can't do that for a full season. So I think that they start diminishing from this point on. But Baltimore's defense is insane too. I think they got the most yeah, sacks. Their offense out of any is team. also good though. But the yeah, offense that's, is that's why I don't points. think this is as big of a game. I think if things go according to my plan, and my plan is usually the best plan, even though I never prepare. In your um, eyes, it's the only plan ever. Yeah. Oh no, I am um, tunnel vision. I can't even listen to other people's uh, plans. <laughs> um, yeah, Baltimore's just good on both sides of the ball that they should win this game pretty handedly. Yeah, and then Texans Bengals, I think, will be a good game. Buccaneers Titans could be interesting. Oh, here here we go. This I'm surprised you don't have this game. This is probably one of my better games of the week. Jaguars versus 49ers. You're right. In Jacksonville. Jaguars 6 and 2, 49ers 5 and 3 should be 7 and 1, 6 and 2. They they need to win. They can't have another loss in a row. The 49ers. And the yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars just keep getting better. Okay, we can replace the Lions and Chargers with that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's a good game. It's a good setup. We're also, both of us are big Jaguar fans now. Oh, yeah. But they're, they're big. They're, I mean, we, they're the we small, talk them up. They're the smaller the cat team. Yeah, small cats. We like, we like, we like our cat teams. We do like all three cat teams. What's the other we cat don't team? like the fourth the cat Bengals. team. Bengals. There's a fourth cat team we don't care about. The fourth the cat team, the, the Panthers. Panthers. Yeah. We don't care about the Panthers. I like their color scheme, but that's it. The rest of the team stinks. Yeah. This is a pretty good show we had this week. We didn't even go over my picks for the week. Well, you that's up to you to say them. I can't I can't speak for you. No, but you, when you're kind of closing it out, like this was a good show we had this week. You just well, say it to, then. Don't just, just look you, at me, say you're it. You're setting me up to ruin the rest of the show now. And people yeah, are only going to remember the final I've already... thing, that bitter taste in their mouth at the end of the show is all they're going to walk away remembering. <laughs> okay, wait, got... hold on. Okay, you go first, then I'll go. Because I said no, no, you some... just go, you just go, go. I got Colts over the Patriots in Frankfurt. I got um, the Houston Texans covering the spread in the Bengals game. Bengals game, um, and then I got I'm going to go Jaguars over 49ers at home. Those are my three Jags. Okay, I've got the Bengals. I don't do spreads. I've got the Bengals beating the Texans. I know you don't do spreads because I th- I still think Texans are going to be too too high off that last win, and the Bengals are a hot team, and they're just they're better than the Bucks. The, yeah, they're better than the Bucks, but are they better than the seven Texans? points? I think so. Um, I got Baltimore over the Browns, as we already discussed, and then I got Seattle over Washington. Seattle got embarrassed this past week. Yeah, they did. They need to win that game. It's yeah. in, it's in Seattle too, so they're gonna they're gonna come out strong. Okay, can now can I say that this was a good episode? Yeah, but it's I don't think it was as good as before you said it. When the first time you said it, it was a way better episode. It only went down. So, so as soon as I said it, I ruined the episode. Well, well it's good though, because people aren't gonna... I was gonna make it worse anyway with my picks, because there was nothing good about my picks there. They're pretty simple. Plus yeah, we were discussing simple. most of them anyway. Yeah, that's why that's why I said this is such a good show because we just naturally talked about your picks instead of saying, These are my picks for the week. And then the just three teams. Out. Just close it out. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll be back next week. Uh, congratulations on making it to the halfway mark of this year's NFL season. Hey, if you're a fan of Formula One, then I've got the perfect podcast for you. The Pit Stop Podcast, presented by the Ordinary Podcasting Network. After every single race of the Formula One schedule, Jordan and Tyler will break it down, give you some news, analysis, insight, before answering your questions and setting you up for the next race. That's the Pit Stop Podcast, available everywhere you get your podcasts. Running Down the Clock is brought to you by the Ordinary Podcast Network and is every Thursday running until the week after the Super Bowl. We hope you enjoyed enough to subscribe and tune in again next week.